J. Michael Harrison hanging out with you on a Friday evening. Truly a pleasure, an honor, a privilege to be here bringing you the bridge. This happens to be your bridge between bebop and hip hop and eclectic mix of music and poetry presented from maybe just maybe an is that jazz perspective. We do it every Friday night from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. So at 1030, we're really just getting started. Strongly encouraging you to keep your dial locked right here. You may indeed find something that you enjoy. 63 degrees here on the main campus of Temple University. As I mentioned, we had the good fortune of catching up with Matt Levy, Greg Osby, and Redresh Mahantapa ahead of their performance this Sunday out in Vernon Park. And this is part one of a conversation uh, to give you a little bit more perspective on what's going down this upcoming Sunday. Keep your doll locked right here. You may indeed find something that you enjoy. Stay close, please. Well, once again, we're very fortunate to have a special guest join us on another edition of The Bridge. Um, you know, I think the last time I, I did this with uh, Matt Levy, uh, it was you and Ori Kane. Was that was yeah. that the case? Yes. And uh, we, we had a wonderful conversation uh, just across the hall in the performance space. Um, but the Prism Quartet continues to, to move forward and, and provide, uh, you know, wonderful music and wonderful artistry for uh, for folks to experience. And uh, it's it's always great to have Matt Levy uh, join me in the studio. Um, he's, he's brought some help with him this time around as well um, in the form of uh, yet another great saxophonist, Mr. Greg Osby. Man, great to have you here as always. As always. <laughs> Truly a pleasant and honor. And uh, dialing in from out on the road, we have uh, yet another great saxophonist, Mr. Rajesh Mahantapa. Man, great to have you on board. It's great to be here again. Thank you. Um, you know, for, for starters, Matt, uh, you know, it's, it's been a little while since we've done this. Maybe give a, a little perspective and a little insight um, on the PRISM Quartet and maybe the genesis and, and you know, some of the goals of, of what you're trying to do with this project. Yeah, I mean, PRISM was founded way back in 1984. Um, we were all students at the University of Michigan studying with a guy named Donald Sinta, who was one of the world's great classical saxophone players. And so we were kind of pursuing the instrument as a uh, chamber music medium and, cl and classical music. <clears throat> but the saxophone is enmeshed in so many other kinds of music, and all of us are, you know, enamored of jazz and folkloric music and, you know, a lot of popular music and all kinds of music. So over the years, we've been branching out and sort of uh, working with artists who are in their own ways also pushing boundaries of of style, of genre, um, of what the instrument can do. So one of our biggest projects um, in the last few years has been something called Heritage Evolution, and it's been a project where we've been commissioning so far nine of the world's great jazz saxophonists slash composers to write pieces for us and then join us as soloists. And uh, we started this in 19, I'm sorry, 2014 um, with a group of six uh, amazing players and composers, two of whom were uh, Greg Osby and Rudresh Mahantapa. And then we've been building on that um, with additional players. Most recently, we work with Joe Lovano. We've also worked with Chris Potter, Miguel Zanon, uh, Tim Reese, Dave Liebman, and others. So so we're kind of, this is a project that we envision as like a, a, life, a life's work. And we're continuing to commission new people and bring people together from past commissions. So this uh, Sunday, we're doing that with Greg and Rudresh, where we're kind of reconvening and playing a lot of this music with them at Vernon Park in my home neighborhood of Germantown. Outstanding. And that's coming up on Sunday the 10th, and things get started around what time? Six o'clock. In yeah. Vernon Park. Yeah. Um, you know, as we mentioned, uh, we're very fortunate to have Greg Osby and Rudresh Mahantapa hang out with us for a bit. Um, you know, for both of you guys, and I guess, Rudy, since we have you out on the line, um, I'll have you chime in first. Uh, just connecting with this type of experience uh, with, you know, a quartet of, of saxophones and, and um, working within that realm. I mean, if you can maybe, you know, talk a little bit about what that experience has been like and, and you know, connecting with Matt and, and this project. What has that meant for you? Well, I've known... Prism's work for a very long time. Uh, 
Tamor Sullivan, the, the baritone saxophonist in the group, and I were both finalists at a saxophone competition. He was a finalist in the classical division. I was a finalist in the jazz division at a, um, a competition back in 1994, I think. So, you know, I've been well aware of Prism's work, and, you know, we'd always talked about trying to find uh, a way to work together. Um, you know, I have a, uh, an immense amount of respect for the, you know, the maybe I'll, I will say the non-improvising, you know, contemporary saxophonists um, like these guys. I mean, they're just playing at a virtuosic level, and they're open to uh, lots of different ideas and lots of different approaches. And I think by nature of the saxophone being a relatively young instrument and and being, you know, at its very core, a sort of experiment, even in its initial construction, however many hundred years ago. Um, you know, these are folks that I, I consider like-minded, even though we're not necessarily inhabiting the the same genre. So it was a very welcome experience for me, and it and seemed very natural. And I very quickly had an idea of the type of approaches I wanted to take in, in writing for the group and, and the ways in which I wanted to embed myself in the group and you know and uh, you know i'm always looking for that dialogue as well in um uh, in collaboration where the music should highlight the strengths of what we all do but we should all feel challenged as well and, and pushed a, uh, a little bit outside of our comfort zone to you know really create something that we have not been a part of before outstanding greg osby uh Similarly for you, I mean, if you can talk about how you came to PRISM and, and, and what that experience has meant for you. Well, I don't know how I came to them. Uh, I don't know what our initial um, meeting was or when, but it happened, and it was absolutely welcome. And uh, Were you familiar with the, uh, with the concept, with the project prior no, to that? I don't think so. I don't think so. But, um, again, you know, I, I strive to... to um, to uh, participate in environments that are, you know, have built-in cattle prods, so to speak, tasers, if you will, <laughs> you know, that uh, propel me into, you know, areas of instability and or the unknown, because that's what our training prepares us to do. It prepares us to to be fleet and uh, responsive and immediate as, as much as possible, you know, without hesitation. And, uh, you know, I, I jumped at the opportunity. This is, was my second commission. For, for the Prism Quartet. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy the idea of of them manning the um, the particulars of, of a group and uh, taking, you know, taking, well, I don't, well, I'll put it like this. You don't miss the missing elements. They, they cover all the rhythm. They cover all the harmonic areas, uh, all of the, the, you know, the, the facets of, that I'm normal normally uh, used to or that I respond more favorably towards, they, they have it all covered and some. So therefore I have to adjust, you know, we're adaptable creatures. So you have, you have to get in there and it's a sink or swim situation. And I, I like the idea of, of bouncing ideas and volleying information and, and uh, resolve back and forth with kindred spirits, just like Rudrich said. I mean, you know, we we're all part of the same tree. We're just different branches and leaves more or less. Uh, for for both you and, and Redress, you know, combining with the uh, quartet for this performance coming up on Sunday, uh, will this be the first time that you guys are on stage together, you and Redress, or have you been in this situation before? We've played together um, somewhat at, at various jam sessions at uh, jazz festivals in Europe. Uh, we did some things at the old knitting factory in New York. Well, I don't think we've done a full-length uh, concert or performance together at all, but I, I think that what mo most people will will marvel at will be the disparity, you know, in um, concept and approach and ideas and uh, ideologies and how we'll find common ground, you know, to to relate to one another mm -hmm. and you know to have a conversation based upon you know the you know you know the uh, the ingredients. <laughs> you know. You know, for for you, Matt Levy, um, you know, selecting a Greg Osby, reaching out to a redress, you know, uh, you know, what 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 attracted you to these two specific artists? I mean, it it's um, just their, the, you know, the quality of invention in their playing and writing and musical personalities. 
like that they're reaching for something new. Um, and just uh, so that they're, that's really attractive when you see artists that are really trying to kind of redefine a medium. And so we wanted to kind of hope a little of that rubbed up on us, you know, and uh, defined, create kind of a new body of music with them. Um, because, you know, classical and jazz saxophone have strong histories that sometimes are uh, unnaturally separated. And I think what we found is like this, uh, with working with all these great artists is this like real hunger for sharing ideas and knowledge and figuring out how we can all get better at what we do and get better at things we, you know, finding, prodding our strengths and weaknesses and seeing like what we can do to grow. So that's been a big part of it as well, you know. That's part one of a conversation with Matt Levy of the Prism Quartet, along with uh, special guests Greg Osby and Rudresh Mahantapa, who will all be in performance this upcoming Sunday over at Vernon Park at 6 p.m. It's the Prism Quartet with special guests Greg Osby and Rudresh Mahantapa. We're going to bring you part two of that conversation coming up in just a bit. You should be aware that the beauty of becoming a sustainer with an ongoing monthly gift is that it's very affordable. It breaks down your annual donations into smaller, easier monthly amounts. Just as you set aside money each month for other things you care about and enjoy, your sustaining membership allows you to support WRTI on your terms. Join today and help our membership become 20,000 strong. Visit WRTI.org to become a sustainer today. Once again, it's J. Michael Harrison hanging out with you, and it is truly a pleasure, honor, and privilege to be here with you. We're going to continue with uh, part two of that conversation right after we uh, jump into some music once again from the Prism Quartet, this time the... Uh, Prism Quartet from their Color Theory CD. And uh, immediately following this piece, part two of a conversation with Matt Levy, Greg Osby, and Redresh Mahant. But once again, the Prism Quartet in performance this upcoming Sunday at 6 p.m. in Vernon Park. And it's a free concert.
Uh, Redress, you mentioned that you you had familiarity with PRISM um, prior to, you know, connecting with with Matt Levy. Um, But since you've had that opportunity, uh, you know, what what type of things have you learned? What has the experience been like? I mean, if you can talk maybe a little bit about, you know, having having again that familiarity. But once you, you know, had a chance to get immersed in what PRISM was about, um, you know, what did that open up for you? Well, I mean, it's always great to be, you know, surrounded by, like, really monster, awesome saxophonists and, <laughs> and be around that energy for sure. But, it, you know, I think there are lots of uh, ways to approach improvisation that are really maybe not talked about in the mainstream jazz canon, and uh, but but approaches that are really interesting and um, and fun for me. And... So it was great to make those a part of this piece. I mean, the, the, there are sections where the, the whole group is improvising, except for me. I'm the one that's actually holding down, you know, you know, the rhythm and the and the tonal center uh, to a great degree, and and letting them kind of improvise with instructions that aren't necessarily the you know what you would find in in again I say you know a mainstream jazz setting and. It was great to just see how that evolved over a period of time from, you know, our first rehearsals to, a, you know, the premiere performances. And and also, you know, I was actually working on a few different pieces, few different commissions at the same time. And there was something about writing for this group that, I don't know, there was, there, there was a clarity that I found the very natural kind of clarity that I felt like I could, I could put forth as a composer, and that doesn't necessarily mean you know simplicity, but you know the idea of of creating something for for horns, where you know Greg was talking about, um, you know usually we're in these situations where we have a harmonic instrument, a piano or a guitar, and we have bass and we have drums, and you know how do we bring about what ways can we in what ways can we compose to convey that same sort of feeling, that same sort of momentum, that sense of groove, without having any of these rhythm section instruments. I think that was all um, a very eye-opening experience, and uh, and also a very pleasing experience to, to just see the way Prism handled all of that and really took it as far as it could go, if not beyond. This right. up, I'm sorry, go ahead, Matt. Uh, I was going to ask if Rudresh would just say a word about the the piece like what it was inspired by it's a great story (laughs) so the the name of my piece is is uh i will not apologize for my tone tonight and it's actually based on i mean based on it was more like just a source of inspiration so there was this video that had gone viral and i think it it actually had taken a couple of years to get to me unfortunately of um gosh i wish i could remember the guy's name now it's been a, a long time but uh it was a guy who was running for county treasurer somewhere in, in the Midwest. And um, he wasn't even on the ballot. He was trying to get on the ballot. And he was speaking to, I, I think he was on the, trying to get on the Republican ticket. And he's, he's speaking to the kind of the, the, the local Republican chapter. And um, and he's really kind of out of his mind. You know, he's, he, his default mode is to, is to shout at the, at the crowd. And... Uh, and he keeps losing his place in his notes and misspeaking, having to correct himself. And um, it's a really, really hilarious video. And, and fortunately for one of the performances, we were actually able to screen the video right before we played the piece. And, I, and, and Greg can probably relate. Sometimes we are, you know, inspired by the most like esoteric and, and maybe even uh, non-musical things that, that somehow kind of keep us going while we're working on something you know well, um, I, I think given the, the current climate i think it's best <laughs> to seek alternative resources for inspiration uh, a lot of people they they draw from the you know the same pool of uh of thought and concept is uh, you know it was brilliant i really enjoyed it that's <laughs> <laughs> great well you know uh, and the other thing i've always been interested to in as well is um the, the musicality, the musicality of speech and the melody of speech, and you know that's something I've worked with in, in different projects, and and maybe in, in this case not so much conveying it overtly, where you know I've transcribed the melody of a speech and I'm trying to make you know something musical out of it. Um, 
it was more just you know the arc and the inflection and just the sheer insanity of this the way this person is speaking was um uh but was scary and hilarious all at the same time mm-hmm. so i definitely wanted to imbue the piece with that energy i can say that like when they were um screening the video Rujesh was backstage mouthing it word for word like right before <laughs> we went on so he had really internalized it okay oh, wow. I will not apologize for my tone tonight. Yep. Okay. So this upcoming Sunday, again, at Vernon Park, um, the Prism Quartet is in performance uh, along with uh, Greg Osby and Rajesh Mahantapa. Um, what, what can folks anticipate? Well, we're going to be playing not only Greg's incredibly beautiful Covenant of Voices piece, which is one of our favorites as well, and Rudresh's piece, but several other of the composers who wrote for us, and then Greg and Rudresh will so, be, you know, be soloists on those pieces as well. And those will be like music by Chris Potter, uh, Miguel Zanon, Tim Reese, and a piece I wrote as well. And um, yeah, so it'll be like a, we'll be kind of looking at this body of repertoire with these two great artists, you know, as uh, featured soloists. And things get started around what time was it? Uh, six o'clock. And I, I wanted to, if I could give a shameless plug, not by all means, to um, one other one other concert coming up on the fourteenth. Uh, Phil uh, at Drexel University, Prism is doing a, a program called Breath Beneath, and we've commissioned two major filmmakers to create pieces with uh, a couple of composers that use computer interactive film. So we're actually using our saxophones to generate images that these uh, filmmakers have, you know, worked to kind of create a kind of database of images that we're drawing on. So it's going to be really... So in real time, you're kind of responding to the, the stimuli. Yeah, we're creating it and responding to it. Okay. And, and it's uh, it's like kind of ex- exploring the like uh, interactivity and interdisciplinary um, modes of expression between visual arts and music. And that's uh, Drexel University. It's all on our website. I was, I was about to say, yeah. I think we should give the, the website information for all things PRISM. Yeah, there, everything is on there. It's uh, just prismquartet.com, and you can just find information about both of these concerts. Um, I'm going to wrap up in a minute. You handed me a new CD, and I want you to chat about that in just a second. But first, you know, also, um, Redress, while, while we have you here, man, if you can uh, give us a, 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 a quick synopsis of what's going on with you and, and contact information and things along those lines. Well, I have a, a new album coming out um, on October 17th with uh, my trio, the Indo-Pac Coalition, with uh, Reza Bassi on guitar and Dan Weiss uh, on tabla and drums. Um, this is our second album. Our first album was nine years ago, so it's really great to reconvene this group. Um, and I'm actually self-releasing that. That's only going to be available on my website, and we're uh, it's only available digitally and on vinyl. And the download is only going to cost two dollars. So okay. I hope that people would be interested in an album that costs them less than their daily cup of coffee. Then <laughs> that becomes available when October seventeenth. Okay. At Rudreshm dot com. Outstanding, Mr. Osby. Oh, well, the end of this month, uh, I have a three-day festival in New York uh, featuring artists from my, my label, Inner Circle Music. That's www.innercirclemusic.com. And then I'll be going directly to um, Sopot, Poland. I'm the, the artistic director for the oldest jazz festival in Poland. And I'll be, you know, curating that. And I have, that's a three-day festival. And... Uh, more projects, I, and I'm finally going to record again after what? a hiatus of what? <laughs> nine years. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, commandeering, you know, the uh, the duties and, and uh, you know, all, all all things musical and at, at the label. So I'm, I'm ready to get back out on the road and, and lead a band again because I've been an administrator and <laughs> an educator for quite a while. No, that's outstanding. That's good yeah. news. Yeah. Um, you know, for both you and in redress, um, you know, again, as, as we wrap this thing up, why would you uh, suggest that folks come out to Vernon Park on Sunday? Because um, many people have uh, their own perception of what the saxophone is capable of, and it may be fixed. And this will shatter any of those ex- expectations. And it's, you know, they'll see a, a very broad, uh, representation of uh, styles and approach and potential. 
and color and dimension. It's, it's just going to be great. It's going to be eye and ear opening. Address? Yeah, well, I, I echo definitely what, what Greg said. Um, you know, I think that it will be unlike anything most people have heard, and I think it's very much music that is now, that is truly contemporary and, and devi- defies g- genre in many ways. And, you know, um, it's not jazz, it's not contemporary classical music. It's it's something that I think speaks to everyone, regardless of, of label or classification. So uh, you you got to come and witness it. Outstanding. All right, so Mr. Matt Levy, uh, before I, I allow you to... Uh to vacate the premises, uh, this new Prism Quartet paradigm lost project that you handed. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations on this uh, thanks, once thanks. again. So what's the story behind this record? Um, that's like a recording of six composers, four of, whom, four of whom we commissioned, who are all like some of the major, you know, new classical composers in this country. You know, they've won between them every imaginable award, you know, um, Pulitzer Prizes and you name it. And so we've commissioned these people over maybe the last 10 years and decided they should be on a, you know, be on a recording together, mm-hmm. these uh, major artists and composers. So we, we just, um, this is the third release on our, on our own label, Zoss Records. And so we wanted to feature, the other releases were um, Prism with different ensembles, but this is just straight sax quartet and with some of the top notch um, composers, including like John Adams, um, Chen Yi. Um, Bernard Rands, uh, and it's dedicated to Lee Hyla, who passed away um, three years ago, who was a great composer who taught at Northwestern University. Mm-hmm. He wrote a piece called Paradigm Lost that's really heart-wrenchingly beautiful. So it's basically an homage to him and representing all these other wonderful composers. Outstanding. Well, Mr. Matt Levy, we want to thank you once again, man, for the, the efforts and, and the work that you're, you're bringing forth, and uh, always great to have you come down and visit. Thank you. Uh, Rudy, I appreciate you taking out a little time and and sharing a little bit of uh, your progressions with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No, truly a pleasure. And and Mr. Osby, as always, man, truly a pleasure to have you. Of course. Thanks for inviting me. And I think that's a wrap. We got it done, man. You can get back to driving now. Yeah, right. (laughs) right. Well, guys, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. All right, man. Be safe. All right, man. Thanks again. And there you have it. That was a uh, conversation with Matt Levy of the Prism Quartet, the uh, great saxophonist Greg Osby, and the uh, great saxophonist Redress Mahantapa. Again, they're all in performance in Vernon Park, 6 p.m. on Sunday. Um, the Prism Quartet with special guests Greg Osby and Redress Mahantapa. That should be phenomenal. We're going to pause briefly, pay a quick visit to the arts desk, and... Uh, Give you a little station identification and we'll hear another track from that uh, new release from the Prism Quartet.